Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading. It is for June 19th, and today I'm reading Psalms 32 through 35. This is the World English Bible. Psalm 32 by David, a contemplative psalm. Verse 1. Blessed is he whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom Yahweh doesn't impute iniquity, in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silence, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped in the heat of summer. Selah. I acknowledged my sin to you. I didn't hide my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to Yahweh, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely when the great waters overflow, they shall not reach to him. You are my hiding place. You will preserve me from trouble. You will surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will counsel you with my eye on you. Don't be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, who are controlled by bit and bridle, or else they will not come near to you. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but loving kindness shall surround him who trusts in Yahweh. Be glad in Yahweh and rejoice, you righteous. Shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Psalm 33 Rejoice in Yahweh, you righteous. Praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to Yahweh with the lyre. Sing praises to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with the shout of joy. For Yahweh's word is right. All his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of Yahweh. So, right there, those last few verses describe the character of God. Throughout the ages, people have ascribed different characteristics to God, even accusing him or perhaps wondering about him. But here you have a set of verses that tell you a whole lot about him. And with these plumb lines in place in our thinking and in our in our heart and in our life, with this knowledge base about God, we can judge a lot of things that go on in our life. And we can judge them correctly by using this standard. For instance, feeling that God is unfair, well, we understand by this that he's just. And we understand through the entire course of scripture that he is perfectly just. Well, that helps. That helps with a lot of things when we understand and when we're when we're treated unjustly, we can understand that God is going to work this out in proper distribution of justice. So let me go back and read those few verses again that describe him. It starts with verse four. For Yahweh's word is right. All his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of Yahweh. You know, some of the people that have gone to heaven and come back, that have died and come back, one of the things they describe is this loving kindness, this envelope of love and comfort and peace that they're in when they're there in his presence. Verse 6, by Yahweh's word, the heavens were made, all their army by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear Yahweh. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood firm. Yahweh brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the thoughts of people to be of no effect. The counsel of Yahweh stands fast forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, he is the plumb line. Any thought, when it says here, he makes the thoughts of the people no effect. In other words, there are no thoughts, understanding, principles, opinions that can stand up against his truth. His truth is rock solid. And anything that doesn't line up with that is nothing. It's 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 meaningless and useless and powerless. Um, 
So verse 11, it says, the counsel of Yahweh stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. That is the children of Abraham. And by extrapolation, us who have believed on Jesus through faith, the Bible says we've been grafted, grafted into that people. Excuse me. Again, it says, blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Or just to continue that thought to make sure I'm saying it correctly. The Bible says that through Jesus, there has been created one new man. That is, we believe by faith. Even as the Jews by blood believe by faith in Jesus, that we are children of faithful Abraham. Because Abraham was made righteous by his faith read read um hebrews 11 so so we are we are that nation whose god is yahweh the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance there's a verse coming to mind that says through faith and patience we inherit the promises of god this is our inheritance you can read just look up all the times inheritance comes up in the new testament to find out what's ours in Christ. Verse 13. Yahweh looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looks out on all the inhabitants on the earth. He who fashions all of the hearts, and he considers all of their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither does he deliver any by his great power. Behold, Yahweh's eye is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his loving kindness. Here's the loving kindness again. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Now, isn't it interesting? We think of loving kindness as being kind of soft and meek and not something you would think of as a military might. But here he's saying that those who hope in God's loving kindness to deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. It's using his loving kindness put up against the great power of a horse as a defense uh, mechanism. Very interesting. Verse 20, our soul has waited for Yahweh. He is our help and our shield. For our heart rejoices in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your loving kindness be on us, Yahweh, since we have hoped in you. Psalm 34. By David, when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless Yahweh at all times. His praise will always be in my mouth. My soul shall boast in Yahweh. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify Yahweh with me. Let's exalt his name together. That's a song, a modern song. I'll see if I can um, link that in the description, as I said in our earlier days of reading this book. Verse four, I sought Yahweh and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces shall never be covered with shame. This poor man cried and Yahweh heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Yahweh's angel encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear Yahweh, you his saints, for there is no lack with those who fear him. This young, excuse me, the, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek Yahweh shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of Yahweh. Who is someone who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Yahweh's eyes are toward the righteous. His ears listen to their cry. Yahweh's face is against those who do evil, to cut off their memory from the earth. The righteous cry, and Yahweh hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. Yahweh is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves those who have a crushed spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh delivers him out of them all. He protects all of his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall kill the wicked. Those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Yahweh redeems the soul of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him shall be condemned. Psalm 35. 
by David, verse 1. Contend, Yahweh, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Brandish the spear and block those who pursue me. Tell my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my soul be disappointed and brought to dishonor. Let those who plot my ruin be turned back and confounded. Let them be as chaff before the wind, Yahweh's angel driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery, Yahweh's angel pursuing them. For without cause they have hidden their net in a pit for me. Without cause they have dug a pit for my soul. Let destruction come on him unaware. Let his net that he has hidden catch himself. Let them fall into that destruction. My soul shall be joyful in Yahweh. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Yahweh, who is like you, who delivers the poor from him who is too strong for him? Yes, the poor and the needy from him who robs him. Unrighteous witnesses rise up. They ask me about things that I do not know about. They reward me for evil. Excuse me. They reward me evil for good to the bereaving of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I afflicted my soul with fasting. My prayer returned into my own bosom. I have behaved myself as though it had been my friend or my brother. I bowed down, excuse me, I bowed down mourning as one who mourns his mother. But in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. The attackers gathered themselves together against me, and I didn't know it. They tore at me and didn't cease. Like the profane mockers in feasts, they gnashed their teeth at me. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction, my precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Don't let those who are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let those who hate me without a cause wink their eyes. For they don't speak peace, but they devise deceitful words against those who are quiet in the land. Yes, they open their wide their mouth wide against me. They said, aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. You have seen it, Yahweh. Don't keep silent. Lord, don't be far from me. Wake up. Rise up to defend me, my God. My Lord, contend for me. Vindicate me, Yahweh, my God, according to your righteousness. Don't let them gloat over me. Don't let them say in their heart, aha, that's the way we want it. Don't let them say, we have swallowed him up. Let them be disappointed and confounded together who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. Let those who favor my righteous cause shout for joy and be glad. Yes, let them say continually, may Yahweh be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. My tongue shall talk about your righteousness and about your praises all day long. Now back up to 27, when it says, Yahweh, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Now I challenge you to look that up in any version. Look up that word prosperity. You know, there, there are a lot of mocking out there against so-called prosperity teachers, prosperity preachers. And honestly, if you read the Bible, it's in there from beginning to end. The blessing of God. The You know, he's a good father. And yes, God is not a cash register, a slot machine, a, you know, some sort of sugar daddy that we go to and just demand that he he gives us everything we need or want but I, i've never heard it preached that way sorry i hear the accusations against the so-called prosperity preachers but i've never heard a message that taught that kind of incorrect gospel message if you a bible reader you don't have to worry about this because you get the proper perspective the bottom line is God is our Father, and when we submit to Him, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, are born again into His family, walk in His truth. Jesus said, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. As we just walk with Him, submit to Him, you know, walk in love, um, He takes care of us. And at the times that it doesn't look like it, we trust Him because He knows what He's doing. He's a Father. You know, sometimes children don't understand what their parents are doing. And many times, depending on their age, they don't they don't even have the capacity to understand the decisions their parents are made, making. So they just they just trust their parents. And we're supposed to have that kind of trust like a little child in our father. 
then we need to just know at all times it's his desire to take care of us and to prosper us. And by prosperity, we're talking about mental health, peace of mind, you know, um, comfort and security and provision and social prosperity, right? Not just having enough to eat, but way more than that. The way a parent would care for a child. So that's it for today's reading. Thank you for joining me. Feel free to comment your thoughts and I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.